Are you listening? The Future is Here podcast, Radical Middle Edition, is for the leaders, the dreamers, provocateurs, misfits, the frustrated frontline leaders. Are you tired of a reactive church? Where the right is wrong, but the left ain't right either? It's time to build the church we dream of now. Are you listening? What's up, friends? Welcome to Season 3, Episode 2 of The Future is Here, the Radical Middle Edition. Today, the place of tension that we want to wrestle with is how much of American nationalism have seeped into the church? That's what we're talking about, bro. Bro, I'm so glad you brought that up because Episode 2 of The Radical Middle Show talks about this. And the commercial that you guys put in there, hilarious, man. Like, I was laughing, but at the same time, after I saw it like two, three times, yeah. it's scary. I know. I mean, it is. And that's what I was trying to, you know, there's a whole interesting story about this because the the commercial is obviously meant to be funny, right? Yeah, it's we about talk, the army of God. Right. The army of God is kind of like, you know, we're going to you know take over and it's, but that's, it's such a good picture of this, this syncretism, right? Like this blending of beliefs between kind of like American exceptionalism and American history and, and nationalism with Christianity. And that's where it gets really interesting to me because um, this idea of the army of God and, and we're in a fight. And the place of tension for me is this thing is, you know, we are in a fight, right? I mean, we're in a spiritual battle, huh. right? I'm trying to fight against yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the forces of darkness. But somehow uh, when you add kind of American nationalism to it, it then it, it creates enemies out of other people. And those people are made in the image of God. And that's where I get really uncomfortable with it. Why did you feel like the necessity of... Because what made it scary for me, Tommy, was yeah. the fact that people do have said those things. Oh, yeah. and like, you know, and we're going to take back truth and we're going to fight and we're going to. And then the signs, you know, you guys showed clips of like people holding certain signs, very derogatory, very offensive, just insulting, like, dare I say, unchrist like. Oh, yeah. And but yet people these are and these are sometimes rhetoric that's coming from the pulpit on Sundays. Yeah. Christian radio, TV. And I'm just wondering if we're creating an army to fight a fight that maybe we weren't created to fight. And that's, that's what was scary to me, man. Yeah, because I think we, we start to hold up these other banners, you know? And so it becomes about something other, but we're using Christ as almost uh, just a symbol. But why would, why would the, like, I, I feel like preaching the gospel is already a big endeavor. It's like yeah. the biggest mission that we have. Why is it so easy to just, fall into, you know, Christian nationalism and try to make, you know, try to marry the two. Because, I mean, I think it's the easiest way to, to gather people together to, to join in with your agenda. Because if it's like, here, the easiest way to do this is this. Hey, guys, there's something wrong over here. Okay, what is it? Those people right there. And they're going to they're gonna do this, this, and this to you. And you get them all, you know, with fear and everything. So we band together. And then as Americans, because violence is a, is a core piece of our culture, it is, man. I yeah. mean, like, you can't deny that. Yeah. It's a core piece that's in all of us. So then we gather together and we fight against it. So what happens, though, and here's the place of tension, is if we're all made in the image of God, but we're objectifying other groups of people and we're like, they're the enemy, we know. That scripture tells us that flesh and blood is not our enemy. Mm -hmm. It's the spiritual forces. It's, it's right. It's, it's Satan. Yeah. And so that's where I get, it kills me because then you have groups of people in our country that, that profess Christ, but don't care about the suffering of others. Not only that, they take it a step farther and they objectify those people, call them liberals, uh, libtards, the, mm. you know, these type of lang yeah, lang yeah, language. Yeah. 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 Um, and then, and then what does the, the other side do, right? Even in the name of Christ, well, then they objectify them. Yeah. Oh, they're just, you know, whatever names you back. want. Right. And do, I mean, that's the, the core of racism. That's the core of sexism. That's a, these are the cores of division in our country. And if anyone's not going to be a part of that, it should be Christians. And that's actually what really kills me. Well, but these last like eight years, more so than ever. Yeah. I heard, man, I heard with my own two, e two ears, like, you know, they're bringing up all these issues that are happening up, that are happening in society and in our country, right? We live in the United States. They're happening in our country. And I've heard people say, but you know what? We're going to fight on November 4th at the polls. Yeah. That's our battleground. And we're going to take back what belongs to us. We're going to take back 
what is ours, what yeah. God, and, 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 man, and that further fuels with like my charismatic brothers and sisters, because mm-hmm. I'm Pentecostal, bro, right, through yeah. and through, Amen, you know? Uh, and, but then the, the prophecies too, man, like the prophetic, like the Lord said that he will put the man, of, I mean like, and I just use that term, but the man of God in office, and right. you know, we need to vote for God. And so it's like, we've made our, we've weaponized our privilege to vote. Yeah. And I have kind of an issue with that, you know? And so, I mean, like, man, like, first of all, like, should we even be telling people how to vote or, I mean, or who to vote for? Maybe it's a better question. Yeah. I actually think, so I think because it's part of our life, the, you know, politics and all that, I think it should be um, thought through the lens of scripture and following Christ. And so I actually do. I actually welcome that. However, when you replace that with the person of Christ, so Anytime that you put anything above Jesus, so even if it's things that I love, if you put justice over Jesus, like you've missed it. If you put huh. the Republican Party or the Democratic Party above Jesus, like you missed it. If you put yourself above Jesus, you missed, like if you put your church, whatever it is, like above Christ, that's the radical part of this whole conversation where I'm like, no, 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 do Christ over everything. And then let's talk about it through that lens. And how to, and that's the, the middle space is the place where we can dialogue about it. And we might, here's the thing, I'm okay if we differ on it. But do we, at the end of the day, do we actually, did we dialogue about it? One, did we not objectify each other? Two, and did we, did we agree that we believe in scripture together? And did we go through that to, to come out to a conclusion? Mm. Again, I can still love you if we come to different conclusions. Right. Um, because I, I actually don't have to believe everything you believe or even agree with your life or lifestyle to love you. And that's the space that I'm calling people into. So if we're going to, if we're going to be in the gray of relationships and someone goes, well, Tommy, vote the Bible. <laughs> what does that even mean Well, I, to vote the Bible? Right. Because you hear it all the time and young people are hearing it and they're going through scriptures and they go like, okay, according to this passage, I should vote for it this political yeah. party, but according to this passage, they're sinners. Yeah, so, so here's, here's the big thing that bothers me about religion and, and Christianity is it's your why. So, so when somebody says to me, like, vote the Bible, to me it actually sounds like an invitation to go, oh, let's talk about that. What do you mean by that? And if my why is I want to actually grow deeper in my understanding of Jesus, well, that's a whole different pathway starting with the same question. But if my why is I just need to convince you you're an idiot and that you should be like me, well, that's a different why, isn't it? And, and then if that's my why, then I'm going to use different tactics. One is a very Christ-like way of just inviting somebody into a conversation, like Jesus with the woman at the well, or hmm. with Zacchaeus, or I mean, how with all the disciples. That's one road where he's inviting them into journey with them. The other one is, dude, either you 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 know, are you, do you believe what I believe or not? And then I'm going to treat you the way that you choose. And, and that's, I don't ever see that go well. Right. So in what, in what situation, like if someone comes up and they're, they're engaging, you know, because let's be real as much as, 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 as much crap, you know, like, <laughs> you know, we have in baggage that we have, we also feel like we are fighting a fight that we're not provoking sometimes. Sometimes we're just innocent bystanders, but then people come because they're being so wounded by the message and the right. rhetoric that comes out of the church that if you're a Christian, people are already on guard and are already ready to attack you. Yeah. So if they bring up a like if they bring up like let's say a political stance or an yeah. issue and ask and ask you straight up, hey, would you vote for this or would you vote for that? Because they identify with those politics. Are we supposed to then use the Bible as our truth reference and say, no, 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 you're wrong because the Bible says X, Y, Z. Mm-hmm. How do we deal with that when we're being confronted yeah. by people outside of church in a very hostile way? Yeah, I love that. That's why, like, even in episode one, right, we talked about, like, the great relationship. So, so you, if you think about it relationally, so this is how I think about that kind of stuff. My job is not to, to argue you into the kingdom of God. Right, I actually want to. God's up to something. So if for some reason this person is in, you know, God put this person in my way, and this is the conversation we're happening, happening, then I'm going, what, God, what are you up to? I, am I called right now to? Am I here to defend the Bible? Like, one, do I really need to defend God? Hmm. 
That that always seems kind of weird to me. Yeah. But do I need to stand up for truth? Absolutely. I teach my kids that, right? But how I go about it actually really matters. Doesn't it? Yeah. Like how I when I read the entirety of scripture, God's like, hey, behave in this way. Be this type of person. And so if I'm thinking about that way, that's why in the episode we we talked about, right? Listen, lean, learn, love. Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about. When you're in trying to engage truth and understand truth, and somebody's bringing something like that to you, it's an opportunity to grow deeper, not just for them, but for you. It's a dynamic thing. So we're missing it every time. Uh, every single time. Every, every single time someone approaches us hostile, we're ready to throw like metaphoric hands. Oh, yeah. And, but, get, but, and get down. Okay, here, I'll give you an example, man. This is really, this happened physically. All right. It's so one time, uh, it's crazy, uh, you know, story where this, um, this pastor I used to work with totally like did, did wrong, man, molested one of the kids. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and then, but then he still kind of had his hooks in these other kids, these other young people. And I remember these young people were staying at the church that we were living in and, and they were trying to hustle us. Right. They're like, and I go, and I was just calling them out on it, not being rude, but I was just like, Hey, that seems kind of weird. Like we're offering you all this, but you're asking for more, like what's going on. They didn't know what to do. So they ran, they got him. And he came with some other dudes and they mobbed on us in the church. And what's going on here? And they, they got puffed up. It's in the neighborhood, right? So yeah. what's up then? And, and you know what we did, man? Just lay back. You just stay small. I'm not afraid. No, this is what happened. And they didn't know what to do with it. When we, when we didn't escalate, they didn't know what to do. And they just walked away. And it's, it's, it's that type of Jesus response. Still strong. I wasn't afraid. But I'm like, if I react to you like the world's going to react, then... Everybody knows what that's like. Then mm -hmm. we're going to fight, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to go back to our American But value. sometimes people would say that your silence is permission and it's validating their position. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't believe that. But Why I, not? Well, because, one, I want to have continued conversations and relationship because that's how things change. Did, do you, did my life immediately change when I accepted Christ? No, there's this process called sanctification. If I also think about what God's up to with other people, it's a long journey. Mm -hmm. And so, but because we're in this quick, like, I just need to, I got this one moment. I'm going to give you the track. I got to, <laughs> I'm going to yell at you. I'm going to, does God work in some of those ways? Sure. Yeah. I've seen God do crazy stuff. Yeah. But mostly what he calls us to in the, the narrative of scripture, the entirety of scripture is to walk with people, love them. And that takes a long to suffer with them. That takes a while. So if I can leave a conversation where I've helped them provoke some thought and they've provoked some in me, and I've got to actually go think through it too, through the lens of scripture, dude, that's good for me, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. And then we can come back together. And then they go, you know what? I might not believe in, in Jesus, but Tommy though, that guy was kind to me, dude. Yeah. That, that guy, and I mean, the idea, the idea is that even if people don't want to believe the gospel or believe scripture, but that they would say, Man, I don't believe what Christians believe, but I would love to work with one. I would love to live next to one. I would love for one of them to employ me. I would love to employ Christians. I want my kids to marry believers. It, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, dude, it should be that aspect where absolutely our posture is attractional. You know, that episode that you guys did, episode two for the Radical Middle Show, it, it, it was, it was, it was eye opening, bro. And I feel like you were going hard. <laughs> at a particular <laughs> segment <laughs> of the institution. And then when I talked to you, you said, bro, I had to cut so much out of that. Yeah. Why? Well, okay. And what did you cut out? Yeah, I'll tell you. Oh, well, yeah, well, you want to talk about it? We'll uh, yeah, talk about I want to talk about um, it. So here's, here's what it was, guys. And it, this actually proves my point. I, so we did this whole thing on, on Truth Social. So if you don't know about this, this is uh, President Trump decided because he got kicked off Twitter, he started his own social media. And mm -hmm. it, it's it's been a disaster, if you're honest, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, but, and he called it truth. And the whole episode was about truth. And I went in on this huge thing about, like, and I, I know, guys, all politicians lie, but there's been so many verified lies that President Trump has mm -hmm. told. Like, mm -hmm. just bold face, yeah. like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, they're blatant. So, and then for him to take truth, and, and then I felt like he co-opted it and then just is going to use it to, to just 
do his message. There's so many things. So I went on this whole thing on it. I thought I thought it was funny. I thought it was, you know, I thought it was well written. But but Cherie, our creative director, is about to drop this thing. She goes, here it is. And I was nervous. Now, part of me, I think I was I was scared because, you know, honestly, I'm human and I was worried what people were gonna say. And but the deep part of me that said, you know what, let's cut that, is it it wasn't gonna help dialogue. It, it was just going to tell people, oh, that's not for me. I, I'm not, oh, oh, I see where he's at. I don't want to dialogue with him. Oh, I, you know, and just to automatically put me in a camp. Mm. And, and I felt like it was going to break too much relationship. And again, though, do I believe that there's parts where you speak truth and the consequences are the consequences, right? I be- totally believe that. I've lived my life like that. But for what God's called us to in this space of the radical middle, I, I just felt like I had to do that. It, sound, it sounds to me like you're okay with repelling. You're not okay with dividing. Absolutely. Yeah. Is that like a better, I mean, is that a way to say it? Because like you guys filmed it. You guys oh, yeah. Wrote yeah. It, you guys spent time <laughs> on it. And then you cut it out because the, the people you wanted to call out, you felt it was going to hurt them. Yeah. Man, what a place to be. It's, I mean, this this space of the rattle is tough, bro. I mean, you're in it, right? You mm-hmm. you get it where it's like, it, you know, uh, all these different places that are pulling on you, and it's it's this deep want to 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 do what I'm talking about. To con- can we continue the dialogue, right? What has God up to? And if I'm just gonna be in my camp and everybody else is an idiot, I, I just I don't see that the the ministry of reconciliation is in that. Yeah, it doesn't exist there. I, I don't, and I don't understand Christians yeah. who do that. I, I mean, I understand how they got there, but I go. I don't know why you would want a Jesus experience like that. It, yeah. You know, last cool. last question, and I wanted to just make sure that I, I just can't leave um, with it, is that if you're going to withhold, like some would say, hey, what you wrote was truth. If you're going to withhold it, does it not serve anyone if you don't call it out? Like, because you yeah. have an opportunity as UIWI and the radical middle to call things out but not at the expense of pain or hurt or shame. Like how does someone that is listening to this navigate that? Yeah. So I, it's actually the same way that I would tell people, like, how do you find out the will of God? Okay. Here's, here's how, this is my formula. Yeah. I even hate saying that, but I, I read scripture. So does it align with scripture? I ask the Holy spirit cause I have the Holy spirit. And here's the one that a lot of us miss. I use wisdom. And I and I, I and then those three things are then wrapped in the church. And what I mean by the church is other people of God. So then I invite people into that process with me in those three areas. And that's where I had I had shared it with a bunch of people. I prayed about it and I and I looked about wisdom and I thought, is this the right way to do it? Because listen, dude, I have a lot of truth. Yeah. So do you. Yeah. I don't go around sharing it all the time. And the way I share it matters. Right? Mm. And there's, that's why the why is so important. Is it to advance the kingdom of God? Is it to show love? Is it to show that God, bring glory to God and show that he's love? If it doesn't, the way I do that matters. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and that's messing it up for the church, isn't it? Because Absolutely. so many people don't do that. Absolutely. As Paul would say, right, to end his uh, epistle, like I fought the good fight, you know, I want to know what fight, you know, everyone out there that's listening is fighting. So please let us know because we want to discuss it on every episode of the Future Is Here podcast, the Radical Middle Edition. Don't miss another episode. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you next time. Are you listening? If you liked today's episode of the Future Is Here, Radical Middle Edition, subscribe to us wherever you listen to podcasts. And don't forget to check out The Radical Middle Show on YouTube at UIWI. Are you listening?